uh, if you look at the background through which he's coming now, he's been sponsored by two extreme groups. One is the JVP, the present JVP. I used to know the JVP from 71 when students and young graduates were back in certain ideas and I also went through certain hardships at that time. Um, I lost my job too, I must say, uh, when the country was uh, being brought into a rebellion because that, that was a uh, rebellion which had to happen um, because the people were not getting their dues yeah. So, but all those elements have now left the JVP and a few people are left with the JVP which I believe is a group of people who are akin to the Pol Pot type administration of uh, ruling the people to force down the throats of the people, especially the urban elite uh, and the educated people, they will like to see them uh, dispatched like the two million odd Cambodians who di uh, died under Pol Pot uh, into various situations out uh, into the farms and all that. Uh, so that is one extreme and that is the extreme where complete control of the government, there won't be any other voices sir. Uh, on the other extreme is the right-wing capitalist market economy of the United National Party. It exposed itself when I too was back in Sri Lanka in the 2004 period as well as in the uh, 1977 when I might say what world, world would consider the greedy capitalism where uh, survival of the fittest was the mark of the day. You make your money by hook or by crook and survive. And under that philosophy, there's another extreme philosophy of market uh, economy, where free education, free health, all that will go out. And we will have these two philosophies. And these two philosophies, I can't understand how they can get together and bring Fonseca in or Sarat Fonseca into the center to govern a country with the military. So, so is that the reason why you say that uh, Mr. Fonseca will not be in the position to uh, govern the country? Is it because of uh, the, the two extreme nature of the parties? Is it the only reason? What I believe is Fonseca also would be aware that he will not be able to administer the country. Uh, with these two extremes and it may be a possible excuse for him to use uh, to say that it is in an ungovernable state with these two partners. So I knock the two partners off and I feel Fonseca, one of, one of Fonseca's first items will be not to attack the SLFP or others who are voting, again, uh, who are campaigning against him but first to attack the partners who brought them because saying they are the people who are not allowing him to govern. But why would uh, he do that? Because then it opens him the grounds for a military dictatorship and that has happened. We have seen that in Pakistan, we have seen that in Indonesia um, where Sukarno was removed and Suharto took over saying corruption, um, uh, various nepotism and then uh, took over that. And the same will happen in Sri Lanka. Once a military establishment takes over, the country will be in an unstable situation where none of us would want to live in that state because we won't want to be under military, uh, the, uh, military discipline to be told do this and do that. Sri Lankans are never there. So what I feel is Fonseca thinks he can wipe out corruption overnight by giving orders like what he would have done or would not have done in the army. Uh, it is not a case of giving orders. Now I have worked up to 300, 400 people when I was handling a contract on a contract in the 80s in the Mahavel. You can't just give orders even to our villages and expect them to carry it out. You have to work with them as a team and get the work done. 
and I think he is lacking in that, working as a team to get a job done uh, and keeping all the people together, all the people of the country. That means not only the uh, Sinhalese Buddhist people, but all the minorities, all should be with, him, with, the, um, gov uh, with the leader. And Mahinda was able to demonstrate that how we carried the country with all differing fractions. If you look at his coalition today, it has various fractions where he worked together to keep them all happy okay. and carried out one intention was to save the country from terrorism or get rid of the LTT philosophy of dividing the country. But on the other hand, the opposition claims that uh, unlike the coalition, opposition is where you have diverse parties like the TNA and the JVP and the UNP and also Sarat Fonseca. It is a combination of many parties and there's a common candidate according to them. So uh, it's not what exactly you are saying that way. No, as, uh, I'm looking at it from the point of view. I'll explain to you why I said the two main parties. Now, the Sri Lankan people, as you know, have different groupings. We still vote in certain areas on our um, party systems and uh, what we have been used to voting <coughs> for the last 50 years. If I am UNP for the last 50 years, I cast the vote for the UNP. If I am JVP on one side, I cast the vote without looking at the issues. So there, the possibility of an unlikely possibility is there of the uh, what I may call the Sinhalese Buddhist vote being divided among the two people. Very unlikely situation because that is not what will happen in the villages. I, I have been working in Gaul and I see the villages are uh, fully, totally with the um, uh, ra, with uh, mind, ra, mind, while the uh, urban environment there is a uh, division that is the truth of it. then people like this TNA has crept into the situation now if you may ask why the TNA has kept wants the government I don't think that because they love um, Sarat Fonseca better than uh, mine in fact they might realize they know for facts that Mahinda carried out a better saving of the Tamil people by at the ha who were suffering for a number of years under the hands of the LTT. He did that and they will appreciate that. But their main card is to have an unstable government in Sri Lanka. And that is where the pro-LTT groups who are I get, I get, I have Tamil friends in Australia, Canada, United Kingdom. They, they, when you ask them the question, why are these uh, external Tamil friends who were uh, pro Islam uh, or who wanted a separate country, supporting Sarat, uh, who was a military man? Uh, their main argument is, we have nothing to do with the South, but we want the South to be unstable. But when the South is unstable, how would that help them? They feel, and history will show you, if in any country, if there is instability in a country, then it is easy to divide the country and foreigners to come in. That's how the, uh, we lost our independence to the Portuguese, to the Dutch, to the um, British. But when you say foreigners to coming in this present day scenario, what exactly do you mean by that?